All right, let's try this one more time. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I just watched Across the Spider-Verse, the new Spider-Man movie. I know it's been out for a couple weeks, but I feel like it's a good time to talk about it and give my thoughts and opinions on it. I mean, just for starters, if you haven't seen it... Oh, first off, actually, yeah, bring it back. Um, there will be spoilers, so big spoiler alert right now. Please, I mean, it's up to you, but... I wouldn't recommend watching this video if you haven't seen it yet because I will be talking about a lot of the, you know, main scenes of the movie and the ending especially because just, pfft, wow, like the ending really got me. Click off now if you don't want to get the movie spoiled, but I do recommend to go watch it if you haven't seen it yet because, man, it was fantastic. It was so sick. But yeah, so let's start with talking about how it compares to the first movie in my opinion. Um, I love the first movie, obviously. I think a lot of people did with it being the new animation style and how it just kind of like changed the game for Spider-Man films in general. Um, meeting Miles Morales, his family, uh, the other Spider-Mans that are helping him out and everything like that was super cool. And so I didn't know how they were gonna, you know, level it up to get to the next step, but they certainly did. Like, shoot, like it was so sick. Um, it starts off with Gwen Stacy being the main protagonist and character and I think this like the attention to detail that the movie provides like how Gwen's uh, universe was more like watercolor painted and like pastel colors and most scenes were like all one solid color and like it was a super cool I mean they did amazing to make everyone's like Spider-Man universe their own um, Especially when they got to like the Indian Spider-Man, uh, they did the obviously Spider-Man 2099, the futuristic world. They had the Renaissance dude, the Renaissance villain come into the thing. Like, it was dope. And no matter what, like the animation is just so crazy and so beautiful that like, how can you not like the movie? Um, but yeah, starting off with Gwen Stacy and her world, obviously. You know, she's having a little rough upbringing and stuff like that. She's in between the area of, should I tell my parents I'm Spider-Man or Spider-Woman, I guess, um, or not. And eventually her dad has to find out because if not, she's going to kill him, which is like, whoa, like, hold up. That was really crazy in the theater to watch. Um, but then the other Spider-Mans of the multiverse come in, the 2099 and then the motorcycle girl. And I obviously don't know who they are. I'm not, I'm not like the biggest Spider-Man dude, so I don't know everything like the comic books and like the history and stuff like that. I've just seen the most recent films, you know, and keeping up with that. Yeah, I don't know. Like they come into the film and it's just like, I feel like Gwen's like whole perspective changes on like what she can do and what she can be. And I thought that was really cool. But like I said, the pastel coloring, the watercolors, like that was super dope because compared to Miles' world, like his is more definitely like a normal animated style I'd say um, but yeah we get to get a really good insight of like Gwen's world and like what the multiverse is really about or the spider-verse I don't know why I could call it the multiverse um, what the spider-verse is really about and like who spider-man 2099 is and the other girl and like what the spider society really means but then after that they finally get back to Miles's world and we can tell that he is still figuring out how to be Spider-Man. I mean, he's definitely, like, well-known and understands a lot of what's going on. But he's, like, trying to balance his life now, which I thought was cool because he has to balance his life with his parents and then also the Spider-Man, um, you know, employment, I guess, whatever you'd want to call it. And so that was pretty interesting to see because I feel like the whole movie you could tell that he wanted to just, like, tell his parents he's Spider-Man because it would make his life a lot easier considering that his dad actually likes Spider-Man now. Um, and his mom brings up that he might be Puerto Rican and then he's like, oh no, I think he's Dominican, which I thought was really funny. He's always just going, 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 which was really interesting to me. He couldn't like really like sit down and relax, which makes sense because he's Spider-Man. He has got to save the world, right? Um, but obviously his parents were like, what the heck is going on with this kid? Like he's 
just causing a freaking madness for him. Him just trying to figure out like his own life and like what his story is going to be. I thought that was like the main part of like the movie is that they kept talking about what's going to be your story. And at first they're talking about his college story. Like how is he going to get into college and what he's going to do about that. But realistically, at the end, you realize what's his Spider-Man story going to be. Because they all have the same type of, you know, Uncle Ben, Aunt May dies, one of the two. And then your dad dies or, you know, a friend dies or something like that. And so I feel like Miles is like, hold up, like we can do it our own way. And that is, I feel like the, the main point of the movie. And I think he actually says that a few times in the movie. And then once they get to like all the other Spider-Man worlds, like I said, they go to like the Indian spider universe. I thought that was super cool and I've never seen that before. So that was like, just kind of just blew my mind a little bit. Um, and I thought it was funny how like he thought life was so easy for him and being a Spider-Man and stuff like that because he hasn't had his canon event yet or can I think it's canon yeah what his canon event is and I thought that was pretty interesting because obviously Miles stops his canon event which kind of ruins his Spider-Man story but then it also shows that you can still have this or I actually don't know because I guess he did have the black hole does arrive and stuff like that but let's talk about the villain like Spot. What a weird villain. Uh, at first I was like, there's no way this dude is the main villain of the movie. I thought it was just like one of the easy bad guys that Miles is gonna be able to like, you know, take care of in a few scenes. But little did we know that he has the power and just ability to grow into the one, into a spot that can take over the world. Like how do you have powers like that? Like you literally just have holes in your body and that that was about it. Like he didn't have much to him. He didn't have super strength, didn't have like these, you know, crazy like animal powers and stuff like that. Like he wasn't turned into a lizard or anything like that. But he was, he turned into some crazy villain. Like, I don't know how they're gonna stop him in the end because he seems just super powerful now. But I thought that was interesting because like Spot seems to be Miles' is, like first like real villain. Like, yes, he had the Prowler and stuff, which turns out to be his uncle, which is also, like, what the heck is going on? Um, but, like, really, and I guess Kingpin as well, but Kingpin's in most of the Spider-Mans. And so Spot being, like, only Miles' super nemesis, um, or arch nemesis, I don't know why I said that, arch nemesis, uh, was really interesting because it, like, really creates, like, Miles' like, own story, like I've been saying. Like, that really seems to be, like, the point of this movie is that Miles may or may not have his own story. Obviously, in the PS5 game or the PlayStation game, uh, Miles' dad does die to the what I think demon breath or whatever it is, and so that was pretty interesting because like I kept expecting him to die in this film, but Miles is obviously trying to stop his canon event from happening and make sure that he doesn't die, which is going to be definitely a tough task. But I like how it's like he can have it all and like he can create his own story, his own Spider-Man story. And he is named Miles Morales rather than, you know, Peter Parker or whatever the other variations of him are. And so I think that's pretty interesting because maybe he will have his own story and he might be able to actually figure it out. You know, I was really loving the film until we get to the part where Miles comes back into his room at his school and he sees Genki. And I look at the wall and I'm like, what is like? Huh? There was something on the wall, right? And then I realized what it is. And it was freaking Sonaldo. Hyung Min Sun. And his freaking Spurs kid on the wall. And that's when I knew the movie was a joke. I was like, they're not serious. They don't, like, it's not a serious movie anymore. But all jokes aside, it was cool that Sun got a little, like, cameo in the movie. That was wild to see. That brings me to the ending where we get to see. Shoot, I haven't even talked about Miguel O'Hara yet. Like, that char at first I thought that character was dope, and then he kind of turned into be like, almost like an evil Spider-Man. Like I understand his point of like trying to keep like the multiverse and you know not let the multiverse explode and all this stuff and like keep it all interdimensional, but he kind of turned into a bit of like a you know just a jerk in the end. Definitely seeing that like the other Spider-Mans kind of had a feeling that he was kind of like that. Like he's definitely like power hungry and stuff like that. And the Peter Parker that. Miles did know was like really trying to help and like kind of be like the middleman even though he wasn't really on Miles side the whole time because I feel like they know that Miguel O'Hara will just like you know snap him like that and just like take him away but Gwen obviously realizes like okay this dude is definitely not what I thought he was and like who he really claims to be and so that was pretty interesting because he definitely seems to just get like pissed off in the end that 
Miles is the one, uh, oh, what was the word they used? He's the main anomaly, that's what they were saying. And that was crazy to me, cause like, yes he was. And the spider from his, the other universe does come to Miles' universe and that's why the one, yeah. And so we'll get to the ending later, but it is interesting that like he claims Miles to be the first anomaly and this is why everything's breaking down and stuff like that. But it's obviously, I feel like it's cause Miguel is kind of jealous of what Miles is trying to do. Like I don't think he thought that he'd be able to do the same thing because he obviously tried to live in other worlds and other lives and it didn't work out the same but miles is like no we can make this work like we're gonna i'm gonna do this like this is my story and so i thought that was pretty cool and just seeing all the other spider-mans in the spider society was just wild but man that chase scene with miles and miguel o'hara and all the other spider-mans that was wild because i didn't know or i mean they like hint at it throughout the movie but they kept saying like, where is he going? Like, does he even know where he's going? And I definitely had no idea what he was doing. But then at the end, he understands that he's the bad guy at that point and like he needs to figure out what he's gonna do. When he realizes that he took everyone, or he says that he takes everyone away from the Spire Society so then he can get back to the lab and send him home, that I was going crazy. Like that just blew my mind. Like that was so dope from him and like so smart from the writers. I thought it was cool because Hobie, Hobie was really interesting. He was a cool character. Um, spider punk for people who don't know um, he was just like he kn he knew how bad the spider society was and like yes he was happy to be a part of it but you could tell that he wasn't like all in on the spider society like he definitely understood what their like meaning was in the world and that it may not be a good thing all the way and so that was pretty interesting and obviously it gets to the end where Miguel O'Hara is looking for Miles as well Gwen is trying to help Miles and save him as well. Um, Peter Parker understands what he has to do now. Because the whole movie, he's just trying to show off his kid, which is really funny. And, like, it is cool that there's finally, like, a spider baby and stuff. But realistically, like, it wasn't, like, a big part of the movie. But he definitely kept being like, oh, like, have you guys seen my kid? And, like, look what she can do, all this stuff. So it was, that was, like, that was a good comedic effect about it. But, yeah, in the end, it's interesting because Gwen is obviously just pissed off that, you know, she did all this stuff. And then... The real ending, like, when Miles gets back to that dimension, they obviously send him to the wrong one. And I'm in the theater, re like, trying to think, like, what's going on? Like, obviously he's back home. Like, I thought he was just back home in his real dimension, and so it was all good. But then he talks to his mom, and he brings up his dad, and she, like, says something about, like, oh, don't say that, or, like, something about the dad, like, obviously being dead. And Miles doesn't know that because he's in the wrong dimension. And so that was really interesting because... Like, like we just didn't know. We didn't know what dimension he was in, but then the DNA machine sends him back to obviously the 42 world rather than the world he's actually from. And that really made sense in the end because then his uncle comes in and he's like, what is my uncle doing here? Like he doesn't, he's not alive anymore. And so that was wild. And then Gwen gets her spider team and that's how I, like, that's what we finish on where it says to be continued for beyond the spider verse. But then we find out that the Prowler is Miles as well in the dimension of 42. And that was crazy because now it's like there's a Spider-Man Miles and there's a Prowler Miles in the same dimension now. So they're obviously going to brawl it out in the next movie. And hopefully Gwen and his team can find him. But that would be like who's the better Miles and like which one actually belongs. But man, yeah, it was just, it was a great movie. Like in the end, he's really just trying to help his family and like help his community because... He wants to do everything for him. Like he, like obviously he's a really selfless guy. Like he really wants to just help everyone. And so he's trying his best to make sure his dad doesn't die and not do his Canaan event. But we'll see what happens. Like I didn't realize it was gonna end in a cliffhanger like that. Um, I tried my best, you know, stay away from the spoilers, the leaks, all that stuff. So it was pretty wild to see that it ends in a cliffhanger and that we don't get to really see the ending of this movie yet. Which is good in a way because it really ends in like the best way possible with the team being assembled for both the bad Spider-Man and the good Spider-Man. So pretty much Miguel O'Hara's team and then Gwen's team. Then we got Miles stuck in the wrong dimension about to fight himself and his uncle who is dead in his dimension. Like it's just crazy. Like the writing, the storyline, everything about it was just dope. Obviously the animation style is just like I said, it's just so insane. Like I don't know how they do it, but it is so sick. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give a rating of, it's hard to say 10, cause like 10, you know, it has to be perfect. I haven't even mentioned the music yet, but 
unfortunately the videos are kind of long so I'm not going to mention the music other than that it's fantastic um, it's hard to compare the two because you know Metro Boomin is just so above his like class and everything but the, la the first movie did have insane music but this soundtrack definitely fit in really well with the movie and like the scenes that it was in but yeah I don't, it's hard to say 10 because you know like 10 just seems like nothing was wrong with it and it's like all perfect and not that I have any like really complaints or like disagreements with the film um, I think just the fact that it ends on a cliffhanger like that maybe that's why I bump it down to a nine and a half but overall insane movie um, let me know what you guys think in the comments, how you thought the movie was, what you would rate it, um, and what your theories are for the next one. I don't even, I mean, like I said, I don't even know where to start. I really don't, I really think his dad will die just because it happens in the video game and it's in every Spider-Man's canon event, but I really hope he doesn't because it would be cool if Miles got his own story and like, you know, he really do it to be what he wants to be. So that's going to be it for the video today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and, uh. I'll, I'll see you next time. We'll see what I got planned for the next video. You never know on this channel. All right, guys. Peace.